So, students, today we will discuss the uh, most important topics, uh, topic of the mechanics, that is the laws of motion. That is, this topic is basically the backbone of the whole mechanics, okay? So, we are going to discuss today the laws of motion, okay? Now, <coughs> of course, everybody know that what is the first law of motion, so if I ask you what is the first law of motion, then the first law of motion says that if a body is in rest, if a body is in rest or moving with a uniform velocity, then it will continue to do so until unless an external force will be applied to it. Okay? It says that if a body is in rest or moving with, con moving with uniform velocity, moving with uniform velocity, then it will continue to do so until unless an external force is applied on it. Correct? Which essentially means what? Which essentially means what? The first law of motion tells us, the first law of motion tells us that an external, rather a net external force is required, a net external force is required to change the state of motion, to change state of motion, okay? Say, say, say for example, the body is moving with uniform velocity, then it will continue to do so until unless an external force is required, which means an external force is required to change the velocity, correct? Or, if a body is in rest, it will continue to do so until unless an external force is required. Again, it means that to change the state of motion, we have to have a net external force. So, the first law of motion tells us why, why a force is required, is needed rather, why a force is required or needed. This force is required to change the state of motion. A net force is required to change the state of motion. Okay? The second law of motion is going to tell us how much will be the force. Okay? The first law of motion tell us, tells us why force is required. Second law of motion quantify the force. Okay? It will tell us how much force is required. And of course, the third law of motion is going to tell us a typical property of the force. Okay? So, now let's learn the second law of motion. Everybody is studying it since childhood. Childhood. See, for example, from ninth class, all of us are uh, studying this. The second. Okay? These laws of motion. So, now what does the second law of motion say? The second law of motion says that the net external force, I will explain what do I mean by external, okay, wait for that. It says that the net external force acting on an object or a system is proportional to rate of change of momentum of your system, correct? You know that the momentum of the system is nothing but mass into velocity vector, okay? So, it says that, it quantifies a force from here, it says that a net external force, the net external force acting on an object is proportional to rate of change of momentum, okay? So, I can say that, I can say that the net external force equal to some constant k into rate of change of momentum. It's a time rate of change of momentum, okay? Which means, which means, okay, okay. Now, from elementary knowledge of calculus, we can see, we can say that this, this, this complete uh, rate, DDT of uh, momentum vector is nothing but is nothing but m into dv by dt plus v 
into Bm by dt. Correct? This you must have done in your elementary calculus class. Okay? Even if you have not done it, this is the simple product rule of differentiation. Okay? So now, the net external force equal to some constant K into this dv by dt which is the rate of change of velocity rate of change of velocity what we call this thing the rate of change of velocity is called as what acceleration ok so we can say that we can say that the net external force equal to k into m dv by dt plus vdm by dt this dv by dt become a plus v into dm by dt, ok? What is this dm by dt? Rate of change of mass, correct? The rate of change of mass of your system. Ok, most of us thinks that this dm by dt is going to be 0, that is the mass remains constant, ok? Well, in most of the cases the answer is yes, but not always. This quantity, rate of change of mass, need not be zero always. Okay? Though that is altogether a different affair that most of the time it is zero. Most of the time we discuss those systems whose mass is constant. Okay? But yes, we can have a variable mass system. Okay? So we can have a variable mass system which is also there in the J scope. So, so now let us discuss one or two. Not discuss. Maybe let's have an example of a variable mass system. Okay? Say for example, maybe say, maybe say, let's take an example of a rocket, okay. For a rocket, basically what happens? The fuel is burning continuously, the fuel is burning continuously, okay. As a result, the mass of my system is reducing, mass of my system is reducing with time, okay. Therefore, dm by dt is not zero. dm by dt is not zero for 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 uh, the case of a rocket, where the fuel is burning continuously, the rate, the mass is reducing with time. Okay, maybe you can take one more example. Say for example, um, okay, okay, let's say there is a tanker which is going along the x direction. This is a tanker which is moving along the x direction. Okay, this tanker contains something. Say say for example, it's a it contains water. Okay. And suddenly what happened, one of the students, one of you guys, what you did is this, you open the wall here, okay. So as a result, what is happening now, water is coming out, okay. Again, the mass of my system is reducing with time, okay. You can see that this is the tanker, which is what my system is, okay. Now, uh, water is coming out of this tanker. As a result, mass is not constant, M is not constant and we have a variable mass system. Okay. Another example can be another example can be maybe say a truck containing sand and, and again as usual some of you people what you did is you open the you know the back door. As a result what is happening now sand is coming out. Okay. From this truck sand is coming out. Again you have a variable mass system. Okay. Maybe one more example if you really want. Say for example, you know, a truck is moving again and, and there is uh, rain, okay, okay, and so, so the water is accumulating inside this truck, okay, so we can say that again the mass is not constant, mass is variable, okay, so you see, it is not that, it is not that the mass has to be constant, okay, but most of the time, we deal those cases where the mass is constant, okay? So, I have given you few examples where the mass is not constant, okay? As a result, now our equation for the second law of motion is this. Now, for time being, I will consider those systems whose...